I don't know if any of you have watched uh, any of the Eckhart Tolle stuff, it's really interesting and uh, Deepak Chopra and um, Ken Wilber and um, uh, you know people like Muji, have a look at some of these guys on, on the internet, they're really really interesting. But there's one thing that I remember Deepak Chopra talking about and which I really liked um, and um, Irvin Laszlo talks about it as well, which Irvin Laszlo is a Nobel laureate scientist who, who crosses between science and spirituality. He brings a muscularity to um, the spiritual world. He makes it very muscular. He's kind of like, you know, um, he talks a lot about consciousness, about the science of consciousness, and he's continually on that bleeding edge of um, new knowledge. But they talk about the quantum soup. And they say that, you know, uh, this reality that we're in now, if I'm looking at my house, I'm looking at my window, I'm looking at this camera, if I turn away from it, it becomes a quantum suit behind me. And if I turn back into it, it reforms. But it's so quick we don't notice the change. So we're creating reality through our observation. We're creating more stars in the sky by observing them. We're creating um, more wealth by observing it. We're creating more opportunities by observing it. But equally, if we are um, observing, if we, if we have a, a negative perception or a negative cognition, we create the opposite. I know lots of guys that are stuck in factories, stuck in bad marriages, in unhealthy bodies because they're continually creating from that place. They're continually reading uh, tabloid news, they're continually um, engaging in gossip, they're continually ingesting negativity and from that raw material they're creating from that. Their beliefs are that. Their beliefs are that the world is negative and they're creating from that place. So the idea is again in Hindu scripture they talk about the fact that we are the creator, the maintainer and the dissolver of our reality. Um, but very few people do it deliberately. Most people are creating, maintaining and dissolving um, uh, kind of spontaneously but from a negative place. They have very 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 powerful negative beliefs um, and they are creating from those places. So I've watched people use positive thinking to create a beautiful girlfriend and I've watched them use jealous thinking to dissolve that relationship. I've seen people use uh, powerful positive thinking to create wealth and I've seen them maintain it for a little bit then I've seen them dissolve and destroy the wealth with greedy thinking or with selfish thinking or with um, scarcity thinking. So I see people creating and maintaining and dissolving realities all the time by accident and normally they're creating them um, sporadically and without any, without any controlled intention. So they're create, in other words they're creating the reality that they don't want or they're maintaining the reality that they don't want or sometimes they're dissolving the reality that they do want because they're afraid they're going to lose it. So a guy with wealth loses his wealth because he's terrified of losing his wealth so he creates a reality where he loses wealth or he creates a great relationship but he dissolves that relationship because he has jealous thinking or he has angry thinking or he has you know uncontrolled thinking or he, or he, or he creates a great relationship from his very best self but he becomes complacent and he doesn't maintain that and suddenly the relationship disappears. So we create, maintain and dissolve our reality all the time um, and when uh, when we're not looking at our house, when we close our eyes, it becomes a quantum suit. When we open it, we, we, it reappears again. Um, and this has been very true in my life, you know. Um, I, I'm aware now there's certain places that I go, like it, when I go to London, I have an apartment. I go to BAFTA for meetings, I go to the Groucho for meetings or the Ivy Club. Um, these, are, these are seemingly posh places, they are lovely places, but I'm aware that through, my, through the cultivation of my imagination, I've created those realities and then I just maintain them, like keeping plates spinning. So they're not here now, I'm sat with you here now, BAFTA isn't here now, the Groucho isn't here now, it's quantum soup, it doesn't exist. But if I, wanna, if I want to recreate it, I know where it is. I know what it is in my mind, I know how to access that. So I'll just go over and I'll access it, suddenly I'll be sat there again at one of those places. Um, and I'm very aware when I'm there that I've created it and if I want to create other things, I will create other things. And if there are things in my life that I need to dissolve, if I'm working with people and the 
uh, the relationship is no longer tenable, that you know, that we're perhaps working on different frequencies or if I'm in an area where it's no longer tenable or no longer profitable, I will allow that area to dissolve so it's no longer part of my reality. So for instance, like um, in the early days from a very negative perception and from an unrestrained imagination, I created nightclubs and pubs and thousands of violent situations. When I realized it was me creating it, I decided to dissolve it. I didn't maintain it. I didn't feed that reality. And over a period of time, it's dissolved. And some of those places just don't exist anymore. They're not, they don't actually exist in the world. I couldn't go and access them again. I've let them dissolve completely. You know, some of the nightclubs are literally not there anymore. Some of the pubs are not there anymore. Some of the people that were in those places are gone. They're dead. They're just not there. I can't access them anymore, but I've deliberately dissolved them. So I, I'm very aware that I, I can create things and as long as I maintain them, as long, like for, for instance BAFTA, I, I wrote a film that got into the BAFTAs and gave me a membership of that place because I wanted to marinate in the best film talent in the world. So I needed a location where I could go and sit with that. So I created that in, in my reality. Um, but I've known lots of people who have created that and then not maintained it. They've not maintained it because they haven't kept up with their film work, they haven't kept up the quality of film work, they just haven't maintained it and then suddenly they lose their membership and they can't go there anymore. So for me it's about continually doing the work, continually maintaining it until such times as it's, you know, if I think it's not necessary or if it's a reality that no longer brings me um, a proportionate exchange of energy, a reciprocity, then I'll, I will deliberately dissolve it. But I'm aware that it, I'm aware that when I turn my back on it, it's quantum soup. And if I turn back to it, it's it becomes um, a created thing again. And we've all got that in our lives. Every one of us has got that where we have certain things that we know we've created. We can access the pub, we can access the factory, we can access our girlfriend or boyfriend. We can access certain places. We can, but there's also lots of other places that we're aware other people have created that we can't access. We can't get there. So we say it's us and them. I can't go to, um, you know, I can't go to that private concert with um, Noel Gallagher because it's just for certain people. So, you know, you're aware it's there, it's within your reach, but it's beyond your grasp. So if you wanted to get to something like that, you'd have to create the imagination, cultivate the imagination to create that in your, your reality and maintain it. You'd have, to, you'd have to vibrate at the same frequency as them and you'd be able to uh, access all of those different things. And then it would still need maintaining, otherwise it would dissolve again. So I've become very good in my own life at thinking, where do I want to grow? What, what do I want to experience? How can I grow? Where can I go? And I look and think, well, I'd like to experience that. Well, I'd like to experience that. Or I'd like to experience what it feels like to have a book published. I'd like to experience a film being made. I'd like to experience a BAFTA. Or I'd like to experience friendship with this person. Or I'd like to experience a trip around this country. I create that. Once I've created it once in my mind, like I went to the Caribbean about four times when I was younger and went on cruises and went all around the Caribbean. Um, I don't do that now because it's not something I particularly want to do, but if I wanted to do that now, I know how to create that. I know how to access that. I know how to make that quantum soup take shape. And that's what I practice. So if you're in a reality now where there's limitations, then you have to be active with your imagination, with your actions, and start putting yourself into places where you can create it. I mean, we hold lots of events that are free. People often say, I haven't got access to you, but people can access me by telephone anytime they want, or by email anytime they want, or I do lots of free events, and all the people that say they can't access me don't turn up. Um, and that, you know, but it's there, it's available. It's available if you wanted it. Those things are available. Once we've created them once, if you come on a coom walk, for instance, this is the talk I do at the beginning. You've created this reality. You've created this afternoon. You've created this environment. You've created Coom Abbey. When you go away, it'll be a quantum soup. But now you've created it once, you can create it again. You know how to create it twice or three times or 10 times. So lots of the people that come down, come again and bring their wife or they bring their boyfriend or their kids and they stop at the hotel because now they know how to create it. So 
we have the ability all the time to create the shapes and the environments that we want but that takes practice that takes belief it means we have to challenge all the old beliefs and we have to challenge the fear that sits sentry at the edge of our comfort zone so I have some people come into a screening it's free they can come and watch a film they can come and listen to a talk they can come and talk to me in the bar afterwards and they don't make it because they get to the station and they have a breakdown or they find 20 reasons why they can't make it because fear rises up or judgment rises up or doubt rises up so they just don't make it but it is available it's there you'd be amazed at what you can create you would be amazed at what you can create if you only start challenging the old beliefs to start creating new beliefs. That's why I put these out. These are my little stories to help people uh, and to encourage people to challenge their old stories, dissolve their old stories and create new stories.